you think there would be like a stun option for a lightsaber if if Jedi is all supposed to be peacekeepers? <laughs> the stun, the stun baton. Yeah. The, the, why, why is there only a <laughs> way of stopping somebody? <laughs> or fuck it, just use force lightning. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I hope they all yell what limited power when they use it. No, they're yelling the exact power level they're doing. <laughs> <laughs> Minimal power. <laughs> Seven percent power. <laughs> Hello there, you found the Lost Holocron, an ancient artifact of lore and legend from a galaxy far, far away. Each transmission of the Lost Holocron, you will join an episodic discussion of media from the Star Wars universe. We will be your guides, Tim. Sporks are underrated. I was going to be the spork. <laughs> <laughs> giving nobody else a utensil for himself. <laughs> <laughs> you just no, I mean, next time when, when we do it, next oh, okay. time, yeah, right, right, right. Okay. <laughs> All right, we got Kyle. Tastes like chicken. We got myself. Goes down smooth. We got Stuart. <laughs> now in five flavors. Yeah. Which one? Yeah. How many flavors of Stuart do we have? Well, we got five right now. Yeah, five. Yeah. <laughs> but what are they? <laughs> Mystery, blue, purple, and and the, and, and the twins. I love the twins. I love that these are all colors. Yeah. <laughs> Purple's the best. Yeah, purple flavor. All right, we'll be covering the material up to and including chapter twenty-three of Dark Force Rising. So, all right, so Stuart, what happened so far? Who wrote this help? <laughs> that, 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 was, that was me. I couldn't, when I couldn't get it. Okay. Right. <laughs> As the war drags on, both the Empire and New Republic are in need of warships. Before the Clone Wars, a fleet of 200 ships known as the Katana Fleet went missing in interstellar space. Smuggler Talon Card knows where to find them. He has been waiting for an opportunity to claim his payday, but is unaware that somebody else has already started selling them to an independent Corellian faction. Han Solo and Lando Carizian have met with the leader of the Corellians. Even without convincing the faction to join the New Republic, they are given a lead on the warships. They are on their way to Pantolamine. Tailed. That's not even how I practiced it. <laughs> Tailed by ship thief Niles Ferrier. Grand Admiral Thrawn has little respect for the ex-Imperial Mara Jade, seeing her as little more than a puppet of the late Emperor. He tricked her into leading his flagship Chimera to capture Card to be interrogated about the location of the Katana fleet. After being dismissed, Mara is determined to liberate Card with the help of Luke Skywalker. Leveraging her hard-coded Imperial backdoor to query Skywalker's location and the Chimera's flight schedule for the next few days. On Jormark, Luke has been training with an old Jedi Master, Jerua Sabayoth. Unknown to Luke, Sabayoth is actually a clone of the original Jedi Master and has been aligned with the Imperials in exchange for a captive Luke and Leia Organa Solo to subjugate. When Mara arrives and asks for Luke's help under the protection of an Isalamir, Sabayoth's oppression through the Force is uncovered. After a brief struggle, Sabayoth is neutralized and left at his castle. Luke sends R2-D2 with his X-Wing back to Coruscant. Mara and Luke head to Wistril to intercept the Chimera during a resupply. Disguised as a supply ship, Mara and Luke infiltrate through to the detention center and liberate Card. A report of a crashed Skipray blast boat with a dead Isalamir alerts Thrawn to the possibility that they have been boarded. One com to the detention level confirms Card's escape and he orders the Chimera on high alert. Kyle, what happened in chapter 23? If he's still there behind the PNG. Sorry, I, I was looking I was looking at chapter 22 and I was look, trying to find out where you were reading from. <laughs> <laughs> and, and I've done that before too. <laughs> One day I'll read, guys. <laughs> All right. One day I'll actually just read ahead and actually know what the we're going to read. <laughs> <laughs> As you can tell by my spiting face, I love chapter 23. The chapter <laughs> would have stopped at the Chimera goes for alert for on alert for intruders. <laughs> The turbo lift stops as the Chimera goes on alert for intruders. Mara disables the other Imperials and the car, and Luke cuts them out into the turbo lift shaft. 
With Card, they make their way to find Mara a terminal to hamper their would-be captives. In the maintenance room, they discover the central computer has been shut down. Card reckons that Thrawn has surmised that Mara possesses a haywired... Could be haywired, too. Yeah. <clears throat> Thrawn is surmised that Mara possessed a hardwired way into the system. They neutralize their Ren they neutralize their constant team and head back into the shafts. Based on their location, Card suggests they make their escape through the less obvious Starship Deep Storage area. On the bridge, without the main computer operational, reports are coming in by comm. From damage reports that clearly indicate the weapon profile of a lightsaber, Thrawn knows that Skywalker is working with Mara Jade. He orders the turbo lifts to be reactivated in order to hurry the escapees towards the hangar. Thrawn predicts that Card is in charge of the escape and orders a squad of stormtroopers to be sent to guard the Millennium Falcon in deep storage while the auxiliary of the ship are placed around the hangar. In deep storage, Luke runs upon the Falcon and orders Card to commandeer it while Mara gets back aboard. In a flurry, they make their escape, safely making the jump to Coruscant. Pelion is irate, but between the data from Imperial Intelligence taking into Card's past, and Imperial's report pointing to the Pantanoman system, <laughs> Thrawn is confident that they know exactly who has been selling the Katana Dreadnoughts to the Corellian faction. Thrawn interrogates Card's natural tendencies to maximize his own stake in negotiation, will leave or open the opportunity for the Empire to claim the Katana fleet for themselves. I love that this chapter opened up with like a brief metal drama between two co two coworkers, just <laughs> complaining about their bosses, yeah. mm -hmm. and it comes right back around to them. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That uh, that little banter kind of reminded me of like just different sections of Venture Bros. Like they do that a lot between like just like the background characters. It's pretty pretty hilarious. I love it mm -hmm. with Goon's banter. Yeah. <laughs> I love hearing the henchman work chat. <laughs> mm -hmm. uh <-huh. laughs> oh, they, they, one of the things was that he mentioned things were better after the Grand Admiral mm. took over. Yeah. Do you think he's referring to the Imperial era or the post Imperial, uh, like post Endor Empire? I think, um, yeah, because he says. What does he say? Like things were a lot tougher or something under the previous command. Like I thought he meant like Palpatine, because I get the I get the vibe that things are a lot more relaxed under Thrawn, even though he still runs a pretty tight ship. I mean, he was going to face a storm <laughs> stormtrooper squadron, right? Uh, so I wouldn't say that that's particularly relaxed. No, not I, that. I'd but... say, I'd say, if you're worried about firing squad at work, I think things are not relaxed at all. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, that's probably not the right way to say it, but I feel like under Palpatine, everything was just a lot. Like you know, everybody had to clench their ass cheeks a lot tighter than they did under Thrawn. Thrawn. Yeah, mm. <laughs> they can relax those cheeks a bit now. A, a little bit. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Man, do they ever get tired of running those drills up on the bridge? It was a lot worse before the Grand Admiral took over. Anyway, what do you want him to do? Announce snap drills in advance. So yeah, that sounds like before the Grand Admiral was there, and it was just like Pelion, whoever, like it seemed a little bit hmm. like loose fisted, or how would you say? Like Yeah, maybe their definition of worse is just because it was like more chaotic. Yeah. Less organized and yeah, that was so disorganized that they would rather face a firing squad or the, the threat of a firing squad <laughs> right. than be running around like a bunch of chickens with their heads cut off. Yeah. Here's the problem with too many drills. You just get used to them and you don't take the real one seriously. Yeah. My At my current job, I have heard the fire alarm six <laughs> times. What? You haven't even been there for <laughs> six months. <laughs> Yeah, that's my point. Guess what? Is that? I guess what I've stopped doing when I hear the fire alarm now. Okay. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> I love how Mara's first instinct is also to just like punch them in the neck. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> oh, 
I thought it was fascinating that it was like, yeah, you you know it's a lightsaber because of a series of micro cuts that more yeah. than likely will be cauterized. Microscopic yeah. cuts. I didn't realize the blade would be would make microscopic cuts. Yeah, what does that yeah. mean? Because I don't I like uh, of the of all the things about Jedi being like controlled and like smooth like you know, when you play like a star wars video game or see it in the movies it's not like oh man how did this body die it's like no they got cut in half that's what happened mm-hmm. well, i mean clearly luke isn't into the dismemberment <laughs> as much as george lucas <laughs> so <laughs> the apple is falling, falling away from the tree you say <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so I think he's just made like cuts through their chest that don't go all the way through to the back. Mm-hmm. Like he's using the tip of the blade to. Oh man, that doesn't sound like a. <laughs> that didn't really sound much better. <laughs> no. <laughs> he kills them in a much more humane way. He stabs them through the heart. <laughs> <laughs> he doesn't let yeah. them suffer. It sounds like you that firing squad is, is, is a lot more appealing right now. <laughs> <laughs> you think there would be like a stun option for a lightsaber if if Jedi is all supposed to be peacekeepers? <laughs> the stun, the stun baton. Yeah. The, the, why, why is there only <laughs> a way of home. stopping somebody? <laughs> why is there only way of killing somebody a blade that <laughs> through, kills you through a series of microscopic cuts or just straight up dismembers you? <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> right. No. It's either full on melting through your skin or just a light burn for training. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <sighs> they need those um the electrostaves from uh <laughs> Revenge of the Sith. Yes. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> that would be much more in line with peacekeepers. Yeah. First or the first order shock batons. Oh yeah. Mm. Or the shock batons from Half Life, or or fuck it, just use Force Lightning. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> Small amounts of Force Lightning. <laughs> You're just teasing what them a the great time. way to keep order. <laughs> I hope yeah. they all yell what limited power when they use it. <laughs> <laughs> no, they're yelling the exact power level they're doing. <laughs> <laughs> Minimal power. <laughs> Seven percent power. <laughs> 24 and a half volts. (laughs) (laughs) No, wait, power's measured in watts. (laughs) You're right, that's the thing that's wrong with the sentence. (laughs) (laughs) But no, this was interesting. Do Do you think... Mara was doing something sneaky when she was off by herself. She wasn't that well. Wait, wait. When um, Luke was springing Card, no, no, like because when well, Card was getting ready and she was like up on the ledge or whatever before mm. before he had to romantically catch her in his arms. <laughs> um, <laughs> <laughs> like he, like do you? She was like it seemed like she didn't get what she wanted. I don't. I think. I think she got something no i think she was trying to get back into the computer to with thrawn Mm. but she still couldn't get in because they hadn't booted up the computer yet okay her grumpiness during that scene was so funny to me that like her looking Mm. over the edge gave me like a distinct image of that redhead from um uh stranger things max Mm. yeah Max, Beth? yeah, in oh, season yeah. two when she's really like standoffish and grumpy towards the the main main lot, yeah. Just it says like she pulled a particular face, and I was like, yeah, Max should play, or the girl <laughs> who plays Max should play Mara Jade in a <laughs> in an upcoming movie. Mara probably has hmm. a mean stank face. Mm. Yeah, years R- of practice, resting bitch face. <laughs> That or she's got some incredible facial contortion to slip in <laughs> anywhere. 
all of her facial features just sit closer together. <laughs> <laughs> I was thinking more Willem Dafoe. But... Uh, I was thinking uh, Will Poulter's eyebrows. Just really. <laughs> oh, uh, all right. So at, somewhere at the beginning of the chapter, Thrawn said like, he was so confident, like, okay, we've got them. This is going to be all fine. But what happened? Why were they able to get out? It just because of the MacGuffin ship. Did you not read the chapter? Or... <laughs> no, but he put the MacGuffin, the MacGuffin ship up. there for them. <laughs> he was he specifically gave that to them almost, but he didn't realize it until it was too late. Yeah, because I, 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 he had to I, recall they had. He the was like, in. he was like, wait a minute, Pelion, where'd you where'd you put the ship? Right, yeah. I, I think I think it was like, information he didn't have. Mm. Yeah. Do you think that like they just moved faster than Thrawn estimated that they could? Oh, because he can't suspect that Luke's just got a universal cutting tool that goes straight through the middle of the ship. <laughs> That's probably why he was like, "Okay, well, the stormtroopers will get there before they do," because well, yeah, he's going to have to go, go through the doors. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> But when doors mean nothing to you, they can get anywhere you want to go. <laughs> doors mean nothing to Mara when she's got a Luke with a lightsaber. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> she was just like, Skywalker, do your thing. Right here. Yeah. Right here. Honestly, Luke was just um, popping off every bit of this chapter. Mm -hmm. He was just constantly moving towards whatever the nearest opportunity was. And I think that's also part of why they won. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I just, he was in hyper-focus mode. Exactly. He was working super fast. <laughs> and it was just like, I'm not going to think of any potential things that could go wrong. We're just doing it. We're going to the Falcon. Come on, guys, come on. Yep. <laughs> he was pure bravado. <laughs> I like this gif that <laughs> that Kyle's put in the chat with the, oh. Luke making his way through the ship. Is the scene from the scene from Shrek when <laughs> yeah. he's, oh, yeah. he's just got to Duloc and yeah. there's the guy running through all the, the, the guy in the giant far quad head. <laughs> <laughs> he's running through the felt felt uh, set out area and Shrek's <laughs> just just plowing through <laughs> the barricades. It's true. No, that's what Luke's doing. <laughs> that's what Luke does to all the historical and, and ancient artifacts. And stuff. It's true. Luke is a destructive force. <laughs> I mean, did you see what happened to the sail barge? He didn't have to destroy the sail barge. <laughs> Java was dead. He could have just bounced. <laughs> Did you see what he did to those precious pieces of art? <laughs> you know what? He he wasn't trying to destroy the sail barge. He was trying to destroy the mural right underneath the laser cannon. <laughs> <laughs> the sail barge was just a casualty along the way. Yeah. <laughs> you know, Jumbo's got a lot of precious art on this sail barge. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> And then when that guy was like, hmm, this is awfully suspicious, points his gun at him and is like, oh, well, pull, <laughs> shove, <Yeah. laughs> knocks yeah. him out by throwing a blaster into his stomach. That must have been so forceful. Ooh, ow. Right? Yeah. I know. That was, well, it's, it was kind of interesting that the stormtrooper didn't even blink an eye and he's just like reaches for his neck. <laughs> <laughs> well, they must have some good training on the throne then. That would have been, yeah, because, I mean, can you imagine being a lay person, have that happen? You're like, holy, you're like just stunned, like, holy, fuck, what just happened? But yeah, I mean, he must have had some pretty good training not to be surprised by that and just, in, in, you know, get, stay in attack mode. Why do you think they didn't recognize him as Luke Skywalker, hero of the New Republic? Because... Was he still in the tech uniform? Yeah, he was in the tech uniform, yeah, but like his but, face yeah. wasn't covered at yeah, all. Yeah, his face is plastered all over the place. No, his face isn't. They knew that Luke Skywalker was there. Right, but does anybody... Like, does the general population know his face, though? Of the galaxy? They had to, 
they had to poison Ivy's face in the last book to. <laughs> oh yeah, that's true. E- even if they didn't, even if the general pop of the galaxy does not know, the ship of people who are his main enemy should know what it's true. You would think so, yeah. Have you guys ever seen a famous person in person? Yes. <laughs> take, it, I'm not the person it, to be asking this. I have, but it's it a takes time. a bit to recognize them because you don't expect them to be in your vicinity. Yeah, okay. That's and I think point. it's a similar thing here. Mm, yeah, especially on their ship. They're probably not. They're probably not thinking, wait, is that is that Luke? Luke yeah. Skywalker? And they're like, they're at work, you know? <laughs> they're not on the battlefield. Right. Yeah. They're, and there's yeah. probably. They probably don't run into every single crew member, so they don't recognize every single crew member. Exactly. Yeah. This is when they're on the Chimera; it's their office work. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. It just reminds me of what I said. Of I don't remember when I said it, but thinking that all of the propaganda posters of Luke Skywalker are just like that oil painting hmm. of him from the original movie. Where oh, it's yeah. just him holding a lightsaber, <laughs> and like, there's yeah. nothing distinct about him. He's just got this kind of weird blonde brown hair, and mm-hmm. yeah. his shirt ripped open. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Right. Trying so hard to be savvy. Mm-hmm. Maybe Luke got a different haircut. Who knows? The yeah. Going for a frothy style, easily. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Those prominent hair spurs will get you. <laughs> the other thing about like when he knocked that guy out and there's just the tech there like trembling with his data pad <laughs> and card comes over and is like i'll take that don't worry we don't want to hurt you take your friend and go lock yourselves up you know we're not here to <laughs> cause any troubles this is why i feel like card is a better leader than mara uh-huh. that she couldn't lead her own organization because she doesn't have that person ability to like no yeah invested nothing in charisma <laughs> <laughs> which is weird for a spy right yeah what do you think her hmm. charisma came from like her connection to the to the emperor and then when the emperor died all that like forced buffing <laughs> disappeared <laughs> maybe honestly <laughs> i could see that she must have been so confused when that happened yeah. why are people not listening to me anymore <laughs> Yeah. Uh, I just had a sad thought. (laughs) You want to share? She then realized she was a woman. (laughs) Oh. Oh. (laughs) Sad thought. Yeah. Yeah. Listen to women, everybody. Listen to anybody. Yes. Anybody can have a good idea. Yes. And everybody knows something that you don't. That's very which true. is one of my favorite quotes. I think mm-hmm. it was a Carl Sagan one or something. But like you were enter a room and somebody's going to have a different idea to you. Mm-hmm. There's no way that you're... You can't be... you Even if you are the smartest person in the room, you're not the smartest on every single subject that could possibly come up. No. I like, I like the quote that if you're the smartest person in the room, you're in the wrong room. Yeah, <laughs> that's a good one too. Yeah, yeah. I, I would probably amend that to if you think you're the smartest person in the uh, world. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I liked how controlled Th- Thrawn's mood was in this. Like there were mm. times where he was clearly getting kind of angry, but then he would just mm. like take a deep breath and get back to work. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I was rereading it this morning and like that part stood out to me too, that he was particularly... no. Uh, unsettled by the fact that Luke was there Mm -hmm. and there was that like one line about he took a deep breath and turned around and and started talking about the situation with uh with Pelion again Mm -hmm. he says obviously a vaunted Jedi master failed to keep him there as he claimed he would be able to do um how do you think the discovery of you know Luke's escape from Sabaoth affects Thrawn and Pelion's calculation of the situation, like mm. to do with should we be trusting Sabaoth in the future? Like, what are we even uh, capturing these Jedi from him for if he can't keep them under control? 
I think we're going to see some pushback against Sabaoth from yeah. Thrawn specifically because everyone else was kind of like meh, but Thrawn saw a tactical advantage to it. But now that advantage is not what he thought it was. Yeah, mm-hmm. I think Thrawn's starting to get really annoyed with Sabaoth and feel like he doesn't really have to hold up his end of the bargain anymore. Yeah. Well, he did hold up his end of the bargain with, with Luke and Sabaoth just let him slip through his fingers and so I think Thrawn is kind of like, well, why do I have to keep trying if he's just going to mm. let him go? Yeah. I mean, that's probably going to come in the beginning of the next book because Kyle, you estimated that Sabaoth would die in this book. Yes. Mm. But that was the first chapter. That was the first chapter prediction. Hmm. Yeah, I I think I expected him to die by the end of this one. Do you think it's going to come down to a like Lord of the Rings type situation where good doesn't triumph for for evil, evil just squabbles itself to death? (laughs) He's just going to run into the nearest wall hard enough. Um, (laughs) I don't know what's going to happen with him right now. I I think I was I was the only. I think real left turn for me was when uh, Luke just like knocked him out and then tucked him into bed. And it was like, oh, <laughs> I, I don't know what the situation is going to be for at least Luke to try and kill him. Mm. Mm. I'm sure anyone else would probably be fine with it, though. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Because, I mean, the Thrawn would still probably want to use his powers to do this, but, do, well, you know, fuel his war effort. But is it really good enough if he can't, he doesn't have anything to offer him? Like, what is he going to get in exchange? Because he's going to say, like, no, you let Luke escape. We're not going to do that again. Like, I don't know whether that's what I find strange about this situation is like, this is an interesting kink. I wouldn't know how to solve it, but like what, what happens here between these, these two like micro factions. Yeah. I don't, I'm not too sure. And I, I think ultimately it's going to come down to, they're not going to really care what happens to them. I think they're going to find out he's a clone and just be like, ah, it's broken. (laughs) <laughs> have you tried turning him on and off again <laughs> like the milk's gone bad dump it out <laughs> is that why his abs are so firm through it's curdled, curdled milk <laughs> <laughs> we think they're abs but they're just horrible tumors that are forming on his body <laughs> <laughs> He just has a bunch of tumors and a perfect musculature. <laughs> yeah, right. perfect six or eight, six or eight pack, I guess. Whatever yeah. we decided he's got. Insane buys and tries. <laughs> <laughs> but no, um, I, I think right now, honestly, I'm not even sure we're going to see but, um, Saviour by the end of this book. I, I think he's been tucked away for the rest of until the next book. Hmm. Yeah. Yeah, no, I think he's a lot of going to go up chapter the one. Of the, yeah. the end of yeah. book. <laughs> he's going to wake he's... up in chapter book three. <laughs> yeah, I wouldn't be surprised. <laughs> wake up. <sighs> uh-huh. So Pallion and, and Thrawn were concerned that he would want to go back to, to Wayland mm. and interfere with what's going on in Mount Tantus. Right. So maybe that's what's going to happen next, is that that fear is going to be realized. He is no longer controllable. He just wants to go back and go back to his original cult and rule things there. Things are going to get a little bit tense or messed up, and that's going to draw attention enough that the New Republic knows where to find them, I guess. That's true. I I do feel like we need to get back to Mount Tantus at some point. Mm -hmm. I mean, have we ever been there? It's just been... 
when we met Sabaoth, right? Yeah. I it, it might even be more of a wild, like, hey, like we're not going to see him to the, like, halfway through the next book. He's going to show up and, like, like, show up behind Leo and, like, have a lightsaber to her throat. And he's just like, now you want to listen? Like, who knows what exactly his mental state is going to be mm. by the time we see him next time. Um, I hope full to send in the madness. <laughs> Me too. <Yeah>. Oh. <laughs> but he... <laughs> you you know in the first X-Men, X-Men movie when um, they have uh, Magneto... And the bullet is just like slowly driving into somebody's oh, skull. Yeah, yeah. Mm. He's he's just doing that with rocks all around the place because <laughs> <laughs> his his weapon of choice is just pebbles from the ground. Right. <laughs> he doesn't need a sick. lightsaber. Yeah. I want to. Uh, do you think the references to the original trilogy are? to create stronger mental images and Mm. because they keep there's been a few the the one that i really liked was the kind of deja vu of luke feeling like oh we're in unfamiliar skies and we're cut off from people and now we're you know we're off on an adventure again and that was a callback to him saying no we're not rendezvousing with the fleet we're gonna go to dagobah Mm. and Mm -hmm. and look for oh right like that was nice that was really subtle you you know get it don't get it. it it was it was a good image but like these ones that are like oh this was like the death star but it was taller or brighter or it goes all the way through the floor or it a matching one in the ceiling and oh it remembers when you know the wolves were coming in and the Diano, Dio, dianoga uh-huh. had pulled him underground mm-hmm. and and like they're more heavy-handed and yeah i can't really say there've been a lot of subtle ones but I'm wondering if it's to because before I suspected that it's to aesthetically tie the books to the original trilogy. Hmm. But something about I don't know what do you because you guys have mental images, yeah. right? What what do you feel when these come up? What are you seeing in your special eyes? Ah, oh, thanks. <laughs> My brand. Um, to me, it makes me imagine the exact scene, but uh, not with the same characters. Yeah. So it just fills in the environment in my mm-hmm. mind um, mm-hmm. in this specific context. Yeah. And uh, in other instances, like I prefer it when it's giving insight into an emotional state like the one i really enjoyed was when han um i forget what he said to cena but like they parted from the corellian faction and he was reminded Uh of when he parted from luke like i thought that was really Mm. interesting to Mm. communicate what was happening there Mm -hmm. um and i mean honestly maybe the purpose just changes depending on the context you know because (laughs) I, I mean, I, I can't think of much thematically from this callback, <laughs> but it, it does paint a picture of what room they're in. What about you, Kyle, as like a, uh, somebody that didn't grow up with Star Wars, when there's a lot of references that are calling back to these movies, is that, um, I don't know, how does that feel to you? Because there are quite a, a number of them. When there's a lot of references to the movie, I feel like it is yeah. kind of lost on me sometimes. Yeah. Um, but I don't feel like I'm missing out on anything. Yeah. Because I would suspect that, like, it's a shorthand for image creation in the scene. Right. Like you said, it feels feels richer to you, Tim. So. Yeah. But it, yeah. I don't know. <laughs> it also makes me sad seeing callbacks. <laughs> Because I like it when Star Wars does new things. Mm. Yeah. Sometimes, for me, the callbacks feel a little too obvious. I think, and... I, I think as somebody who, as a, a group of people who are into Star Wars now, like, callbacks in this time were a lot more rare and cool 
now, uh, now mm. nowadays it's like okay yeah we get it c3po now, and r2d2 are here yeah now we, we know what, now we know what the callbacks led to <laughs> yeah yeah i don't particularly feel like it's been self-referential in the way that the new movies are mm. but the callbacks feel more organic to the story mm. they do so, some of them feel a little bit like remember that guys but <laughs> yeah no i can't i definitely felt that about some specific ones <laughs> i can't remember yeah. those specific ones but i mean yeah <laughs> that's uh, just because yeah, totally. they were not memorable callbacks <laughs> yeah and i think that's what what makes some of these stronger than others is like i'm, yeah. I'm sure we won't remember this one um you know halfway through the next book because it is just building the scene or like trying to make whatever image he's creating here stronger well just but, because he said that i'm going to <laughs> <laughs> but yeah i think some of the other ones like the one of the uh, of being reminiscent of being isolated and then going to dagobah mm -hmm. is is very useful to the story because yeah. it's more contrasting than like i don't know nostalgia baiting yeah and i feel like that's where that's where well, that's where it's strongest it's when it's when it has something to say yeah or like mm -hmm. how luke was thinking of yoda and then he sees sabai off mm. yeah yeah like as yeah. you said contrasting familiar elements with new ones like that's interesting mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. yeah and this was contrasting in a way as well, because we're going up the chute now. <laughs> yeah. This yeah. one's kind of like sp springboarding as well. Yeah. And this time we want the <laughs> walls to close in. <laughs> yeah. I feel like yeah. it's almost like, <laughs> you know, when, when Luke's at Card's cell, he's like, I'm Luke Skywalker. I'm here to rescue you. <laughs> he's like, wait, haven't I done this before? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh man, I just had a really sad thought of like characters that are constantly trapped in this repetition of deja vu because that's like that's what they're known for. Oh and no. They're just <laughs> getting older and a little sadder and like but that's what the audience is demand like I feel like a lot of artists might go through this. Particularly like YouTubers who get a lot of burnout mm. is like being pushed to for to create a particular kind of content that they're not really into anymore, but like mm -hmm. they do it because that's their character. I'm mm. like, I'm Luke Skywalker. I'm here to rescue you. <laughs> I'm Luke Skywalker. I'm here to rescue you. So you're saying is Metro Man from Mega Mind? <laughs> yes. uh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Imagine Luke eventually has custom fitted stormtrooper armor just for these moments <laughs> <laughs> he wears them in all his rescue missions <laughs> look i know i'm gonna have to go through the garbage chute again and i'll need a stormtrooper armor <laughs> and then he has a phase where he's like trying to do be creative with it each time <laughs> i'm luke skywalker i'm here to rescue you <laughs> like different delivery and stuff <laughs> Or different entrances into the cell. <laughs> one time he just cuts a hole in the ceiling and drops down. <laughs> I'm going to speed run this one. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. yeah. And then he gets burnt out. <laughs> After the 20th time, he's just like, uh, do I have to? <laughs> I can't think of anything else. <laughs> <laughs> Look at this, it. this this variation seemed to get the best reaction i'll stick with that <laughs> and then he's like elvis presley chained to do the same <laughs> performance over and over again in vegas <laughs> right <laughs> by a controlling manager no <laughs> okay um so in the second chapter we mm -hmm. had um Mara talking to Card and Card is telling her about no we're not just going to give these this information up we're not just going to try and appease the empire um we we don't give up the dreadnoughts under duress not to Thrawn not to anybody else mm. we may choose to we never have to is that clear we'll never have to do you feel like his 
making this choice to give it to the New Republic now, or does he feel like he's forced into this choice? Do you feel like Ooh. that's consistent with what I, he yeah. wanted? I kind of feel like he's getting worried that somebody else is going to find it. I don't that he won't be that. the one to give it up, but somebody else will get it. Mm. But I don't think he has any information that would tell him that. Well, maybe, but yeah, that's probably true. I think us, the reader, has that, but not him. Yeah. So what I'm thinking yeah, is that true. he he felt like he could sell it to any side, but now that he has been captured and tortured by the Imperials, he kind of can't give it to them mm-hmm. just yeah. on principle. Yeah. So is he really choosing to give it up or does he have to give it up to the only side that will that he's willing to deal with i think he's still choosing to because yeah. he could have just not told them mm. but i think he also feels like he maybe owes them one now i feel, that's I feel a, like that's a pretty yeah. big payment for that though exactly right. but he also probably feels like the empire is definitely a threat to him now and he cannot yeah. do business with them anymore and mm. because of how dangerous they are he wants them wiped out so arm mm. the guys that can wipe them out um, yeah. have the best chance of wiping them out yeah it's like the enemy i think it's a calculated decision thing. yeah mm. yeah okay. that still has him in control do you think yeah. card is actually going to be greedy do you think that's going to be a stopping point for him hmm kind of like yeah, you know I mean, hey i'll tell you but let's see what you're willing to pay is like because that's what thrawn thinks is going to happen yeah right i kind of doubt it. i think thrawn's overestimating how yeah. or under thrawn is underestimating how much he has turned card away from the empire yeah. That I'm, I'm, I'm pretty sure he's going to go to the New Republic and say, like, here you can take these ships because, like Tim said, like, mm-hmm. you know, I need, I need to arm the guys who are fighting these other guys. Yeah, and, and Card also sees a lot of value in non-monetary things as well. Yeah, and yeah. his safety is a really valuable. Thing. <laughs> yeah. I was yeah. going to say, if anything, I, I feel, I, I feel like the smartest thing that he would do is be like, hey take these for now so you can take out the people trying to kill me we'll talk about Mm. a more realistic deal later that's what i think is going to happen too Mm. yeah and whether or not he's going to actually like the deal later yeah and tim you're you're totally right he cares more like there's money right and then there's stuff that isn't money that is very valuable that yeah he is he is putting a lot of deposits in that bank account right now yes What's what's the point of money if he's going to get executed by the Imperials? Yeah, yeah, right. That was uh, that was Han's point at the end of uh, of the New Hope as well. And this could also put him in good standing with the New Republic, which is a position he can leverage. Mm. So he's to possibly really be getting... the mm-hmm. come full circle to um, the be, being the one to fulfill the logistics from that was right at the beginning of the other book. There's a lot of good things in this deal for him, honestly. Mm-hmm. Mm. Plus, yeah. also, realistically, what is he going to ask for? It, it, like, It's not that he's like, well, I'm going to want $4.2 trillion if you want access to these <laughs> 200 elite class ships that <laughs> you want. That I'm gonna may or may not still be there. <laughs> right. <laughs> Again, I, I, I hate that we keep coming back to this. The fact that he's like, I saw them. 20 years ago. years ago. Yeah. <laughs> I know they're still there. <laughs> All 200 of them are there. I know it. I, if they at least put in a little throwaway that like every so often I go check on them or something. <laughs> but he's just like, I saw them 20 years ago and I know how to get back. Yeah. So do you think Card knows that uh, Bell Iblis's group has like, what was it, three or four of them? Nah, I, I, no. I, I think he's totally in the dark. I think he thinks yeah. that like that bicycle in the woods, that's still there. <laughs> yeah. No, who's gonna find a bicycle in the woods? <laughs> that's my bicycle. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And by the time he gets there, it's grown up into the tree. 
<laughs> hey, it's still his bicycle. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> It works in like movies where it's like in a jungle or like deep within a cave system or something, but it's just outside. It's just out in the open. Anyone parading around can find it's, it. <laughs> it's like a balloon, you know, in the in the sky. It's just floating around. And again, it's, it's two hundred dreadnoughts. <laughs> yes, I am aware it's space is big. It's two hundred dreadnoughts. <laughs> it's space. Space is big. <laughs> you're, you're right. You're on space. Right. Been, um, it's interstellar space as well. So it's like, yeah, y- 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 nobody has any reason to be there. Right? Yeah. It is so enormous that like it would be undetectable. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. The odds of someone else stumbling on it would be incredibly low. Well, yeah, but they stumbled upon it. Right. In the first place. Right. Yeah, yeah, but he he doesn't think. But that, it's he, like lightning he thinks that twice. he's the smartest person yeah. in that room, <laughs> right? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and was like, if you I'm the to... only one that understands what we've walked up on here. Oh, true. Yeah, that's about again. It. It's been twenty years, <laughs> right? <laughs> I mean, <laughs> if I had to bet that lightning has struck the same thing in twenty years, yeah, I'd say there's a good chance. Of I it. think so too. Yeah, <laughs> like there's so many groups out there, like smuggling groups and pirates and. But it's also not like this is the Jesus statue in Brazil. Well, actually, yeah. and I was actually just going to bring up Jim Caviezel or whatever the hell his name is in <laughs> Passing the Christ got struck by lightning three times. So it was a, it was a bit like that. I think God was telling him he shouldn't be making that movie. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it's the lottery fallacy, kind of. Yeah. Crossed with it's the lottery fallacy crossed with the law of very, 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 very large numbers on both sides, and it's hard mm-hmm. to estimate. Like, you know, just there's so many people out there pulling lottery tickets every day. Are we going to jump on this, um, <laughs> you know, thing in interstellar space, or I, I mean, I guess we're going to find out, but. It, <laughs> And, I, and, I, and I'm sick of parking on this. I, I'm sick of parking <laughs> on this as well. Like this is the last thing I'm gonna say about it. Is that if it was even maybe even if it was a little more of a less known thing, but even mm. Luke was like, "Well, I'm gonna come to Bunkin, but even I know about the dreadnought." Right. <laughs> yeah. You're right. Yeah. I don't know about trees, but I know about the dark horse. <laughs> yeah. I don't trust trees, but I know the 200 chips that went missing. <laughs> I trust the rumor that I heard. Yeah, but I mean, there's also interstellar hazards. Like, what? How does Card know it wasn't like obliterated by like asteroids or something? You know? Yeah, and I mean, there aren't hyperspace coordinates to them. So, what if you're yeah. going to crash into them on the way? Yeah. Mm. Yeah. <sighs> like, it is insanely lucky that Card even stumbled upon them in the first place. Right. I mean, didn't it, wasn't it because of like, um, uh, like in the first book, he he turns around and looks at Mara and says, maybe it wasn't such a coincidence that we dropped out of hyperspace at this exact place to find Luke Skywalker's X-wing stranded in right. He's had before, yeah. Well, but then, like that, that's the kind of that's the way that they found the the Dark Force as well. Is that they yeah. they just they needed they needed to jump because the Imperials were coming after them. And then they just dropped out wherever they were, and then they just recalculated from there. Yeah. And if the Dark Force is in such a secret, secure place, then how did Bell Iblis's group get some of them? Because the guy, like, the guy that they're going to go find in the oh, the, the captain, right? Bella Pola po, to Pen Pon Pen, 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 the Pantaloon system. Pan, yeah, <laughs> Pantaloon. So the so the Pantaloon <laughs> is is, an, is a guy from his crew. That's that's okay. how. That's, That's what I mean. Right. Like he thought he was yeah, the smartest yeah. person in the room, and you know, mm. somebody else was also smart enough to recognize that what they found. Yeah. Oh yeah, that's another aspect. Like, would they know, recognize it? Because it's one thing to hear a story; it's another to know what the story is referring to. Mm. Yeah. That's right. What if it's another group of two hundred dreadnoughts that <laughs> went missing? <laughs> <laughs> well i mean space is big guys who knows how many 200 feet of dreadnought ships are there? honestly yeah <laughs> honestly Maybe. yeah all those golden age empires that just disappeared at some point in the past they're just <laughs> stumbling across this 200 
<laughs> oh, that was two hundred six. Okay, from, from, like, from the Ritakan Empire, <laughs> from the ancient Sith Empire, from the first Great Exodus. From the... <laughs> after this podcast, I'm gonna launch two hundred ships into space just for fun. Like it happens. <laughs> Do it. Honestly, what if the... we have the technology? <laughs> What if the ships were drifting out of the galaxy, but then got caught in the orbit of something and sent back in? Mm, yeah. yeah, yeah, like a giant planet or something. You know, they got yeah. pulled into the surface. Yeah, maybe. Yeah. Oh, what do they call the the the, the um like rogue planet or something like that? That yeah, mm-hmm. just oh, drift yeah. into yep. still space. I like to think that um like a silly bit and like one of those and like a biker movie that all the Jedi's are lined up next to each other and a single asteroid is going to hit one on the end and they're all going <laughs> to tumble over each other. <laughs> <laughs> they're just dominoes. Boof, 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 boof. Like, like motorcycles. Yeah. <laughs> oh, wait, we haven't made an Avatar reference yet. It's going to be like the end of Avatar <laughs> where the ships are hitting into each other. <laughs> Uh, yeah. <clears throat> so <laughs> Peleon said that he didn't have enough explet- expletives to uh, express himself uh, about how frustrated he was <laughs> that they got away who do you think has the dirtiest potty mouth in the galaxy far far away oh R2. R2 D2. Yeah, easily. <laughs> yeah. Everything he says they censor. I feel like yeah. that's a classic joke. Who who yeah. no, but who really we just swear is constant. <laughs> yeah. Is this why Leia's having a hard time understanding Chewbacca? Because he's <laughs> <laughs> using rare and exotic Shuriwook swears <laughs> as he's constantly talking. <laughs> I, I imagine I, I that Chewbacca is somebody who is fed up with this bullshit and is ready to get the fuck out at all times. <laughs> he is constantly has to protect these dumbasses from hurting themselves. <laughs> you know what? I bet Palpatine can throw out an eloquent string of swears. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like Luke is like such the farm, like the Boy Scout farm boy. He's like never cursed in his life. But then like he discovers how cool it is and he's like just throws out random curse words just like at random just, whenever he feels like it's appropriate. But they're, like, they're just like highly unusual places. Yeah. <laughs> May the force be fucking with you. Yeah. <laughs> or he's like, you know, like he does something cool, he'd be like, guys, that was the shit, right? <laughs> I feel like just because he's played by Harrison Ford, I feel like honored to be a great runner for it. That was yeah. my thought as well. <laughs> yeah. It's like, ah, yeah. No, it's the guy from A New Hope that has the death sentence on 12 systems. He's got the death <laughs> sentence for his body mouth. <laughs> he has offended every culture. <laughs> <laughs> I, yeah. I saw a meme of, of um of that scene where it's like you better watch yourself. I have the death sentence in twelve systems, and then it, and then it's and then it's Obi Wan Kenobi that's like you're joking, right? My, uh, I'm outlawed across the entire he's like, galaxy. Yeah. He's like, oh yeah, what'd you do? Uh, I, I just uh, I said the bad word. <laughs> Any more thoughts on this chapter? It's really escalating. Yeah. yeah. I feel yeah, like, that... uh, I don't know. I feel like Timothy Zahn led up their discovery of the Millennium Falcon. I thought, I felt that was pretty okay. Yeah. I mean, I, I was like, when I was reading, I was like, oh, that's cool. Yeah. Mm. I feel like I should have, but, um, I don't know. I feel like they would have had a little more resistance to just, blasting out of the ship on it but then again i mean is that a situation you really prepare for i don't know i mean like the flying a ship out from within your own ship like how do you prepare defense against that mm-hmm. close the blast doors maybe 
Yeah. Yeah, I thought. Well, I mean, that's about all there is, honestly. And if you can't yeah, close them in right. time, then yeah. And I think I guess I thought the Millennium Falcon would be like in more secure area that wasn't so close to an an escape. Well, you know what? Where the the hangar is like on the on the um, was it dorsal ventral side of the of the ship, right? So there, there's a like huge gaps in the bottom of the of the of Star Destroyers. Mm-hmm. Once they're out of the um, deep storage, like it's just a straight shot into empty space. Mm. Yeah. Oh, uh, I don't know. You figured they would at least do something. Just, I don't know. But if there's no reason for it to fly, do something equivalent to like take out the ignition coil or something. Yeah, like pull the distribution um, cap off or something, you know. Yeah. yeah. I did like how. Luke was telling Card, yeah, he's got all the systems cross wired and <laughs> makes everything like super easy. It makes like the the startup process super quick and everything. And here he could, you know, he, he could fly with half the systems out because oh. everything's cross wired. And I thought that was cool. Oh, yeah. <laughs> that reminded me as well that like he he said, is there any encryption that I need to worry about? Mm, right. And and thinking Looks about like... encryption these days versus encryption those days is like. In, in 1991 that your password would be like you know big green banana or something like that that like you could actually <laughs> tell somebody but these days like you need a usb with like 164 bit encryption of like a key that's just a random string of numbers that like mm-hmm. you can't crack with a machine the size of the you know a computer the size of you know new york city yeah the kind of yeah and like, uh, I think I just saw a clip from, I think his name is Pirate Software, where he's like, uh, I, I, feel, I feel so secure in my passcode. I'll show you all my passcode right now. Hmm. And he just pulled up like an image of something. He's like, here's my passcode to get into everything. And he's uh-huh. like, you, you'll never crack it. Hmm. <laughs> uh-huh. But I, I also enjoyed the like he's like security codes. You have any idea how fragile this ecosystem is? A security code would bring this whole mess down. <laughs> <laughs> That's a load bearing stain on that wall. <laughs> uh. The one other line I liked in this um in this chapter was when Thrawn calls over Rook and mm. says, mm. you know, find some non combatants, take all the Asilomiri, and use your hunter's instincts for the placement of like where they get, should go and then I was like, Ooh, yeah. Even though it didn't come up and didn't help you know, suppress Luke's ability, I thought that Delegate. was really cool that it was like, Yeah, we're doing these things. Yeah. And particularly after he said, like, do you want the whole Chimera to go wait in the hangar for them to try and escape? <laughs> that it was, uh, yeah, it was quite nice. I thought it was nice kind of stuff. funny how Pelion, like, kind of expressed how he was a little afraid that Luke would come and get him. He's like, well, we could use a Silmar Sil- Mary here on the bridge, too. <laughs> <laughs> and Thrawn's like, shut up. <laughs> <laughs> I need to think. And now, why... <laughs> I think yeah he I was uh, I was thinking like why would he think that Card's the one in charge here but like because Card was you know in either sleep deprived or or whatever mm. food food deprived for his uh, torturing or yeah. pre-torture that like why is Luke not the one in command or Mara not the one being the bossy commander in the situation but no i think card was a neutral party between the two of them that's kind of like settle down kids uh, yeah. i'm the leader here mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah they needed that <laughs> yeah i'm the grown-up here yeah yeah if they had had to get out without card and tow then they absolutely would not have made it yeah mm. because mara would have just been absolutely pissed <laughs> yeah she was tolerating luke while they were getting card yeah. But I mean, even after they got card, there's three of them there. Who is the one coordinating the effort? It's not like, <laughs> it's not three, uh, it's not a Hydra trying to like get its neck twisted. 
around it, all the heads. Like one head is controlling the other two, just as a coordination problem. I think Luke was leading it. He was kind of in a way because it was his idea to take the Millennium Falcon. I mean, like at the end there, yeah. But like getting from when they oh. when the um, the 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 lift car stopped, mm. that you know Mara Mara was on the on the on the first. On it first, so like, okay, Luke, cut down this door. I need to go find a computer over there. Cut that, and uh, and then after they had the the confrontation with the reconnaissance team, everybody turned to Card, and Card was like, okay, this is my plan. We're close to this. Let's go. Oh, okay, and right. Yeah, he was the one coordinating everybody, and then Luke became like front card, and Mara was, I don't know, looking for opportunities to <laughs> up. Yeah, mm-hmm. it was a fun team. Yeah, I'm still I'm still doubting whether they'll get the um, we'll get to see the the Katana fleet in this book. Yeah, but, I don't think so. Yeah, I mean we're getting close to it, so that we, we might open the next book in the Katana fleet. Mm-hmm. But mm-hmm. the I'm only thing we know for sure is that it's rising. It is. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> what is the next one called? But yeah. The next one's called The Last Command. Mm. We can come up with our uh, what are the multiple meanings of, of The Last Command when we start reading that one as well. I already have theories. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> would you like to de- declare them on or off record? Uh, I would say right now. I, th- I think it's, one of them is going to be uh, The Emperor's Last Command to Mara. I think it's going to be... Um, I think the is the is the last command. And it's not going to be if like it's if it was the last one. I think I do think Thrawn is ending. He's going to die in the trilogy. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Oh, and then what will his last command be? Mm-hmm. Maybe it'll be something mm-hmm. that leads to a pirate victory for the New Republic, mm-hmm. or or a pile of razor grass. <laughs> <laughs> his last command: cut this damn lawn. <laughs> <laughs> And then we get a Metroid escape sequence at the end of the book. And then the whole ship flips upside down and they have to go through it backwards. <laughs> <laughs> well, I like where the, the Those little... are very good. I, yeah. <laughs> if ever I finish a book, I'm going to give it to Kyle to read so that he can come up with all these multiple meaning things to so be like, <laughs> this should be the title of your book. Uh, yeah. <laughs> How is that story that you're writing that you, it was going to be like a book that leads into a tabletop game? Mm, oh, I'm sorry. I can't remember. <laughs> <laughs> was I doing that? Oh, okay. uh, there's a lot of world building happening and not a lot of story being written. Oh, yeah. I know what you mean. It happens all the time. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I, I make lots of words. <laughs> we'll mile we um, um, uh, we'll mile while it eats de- deep on my end. Okay. <laughs> I, just, I just put my my finger in a lot of pies. World really happens a lot. That's why that's why I made it a three three uh, three part sci fi trilogy up in my head. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> All right. Well. <sighs> I like the roller coaster we're currently on with this book. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And I feel like the momentum is not going to stop, even though this thing is over. And I like yeah. that feeling. I yeah. feel like this book was, re- everything was just really set up in this book, and now we've just shot off. Yeah. I mean, I said it before the longer Timothy Zahn is right, writes, like, he really builds, um, builds through his stuff. Yeah. He's got good momentum. Yes. Yeah, I, I thought this was a pretty exciting chapter. This and the last couple chapters on the Chimera mm. have been pretty good so far. Yeah, yeah. just the overall flow between them. Yeah, they move it's the story nice. along yeah. really nicely, and it's just, I like the suspense. Anything else? Drink Bakari yeah. Sweat. Drink yes. Bakari Sweat. Drink Bakari Sweat. <laughs> you may be low on electrolytes. Have you considered <laughs> Bakari Sweat? <laughs> <laughs> Can I interest you in sports drink flavor? <laughs> <laughs> I guess that's it. Okay. Sign us off, Scotty. Do the thing. Do the thing. This has been The Lost Holocron. 
You can find transcripts, links to discussions, and more at our website, lostomicron.com. While you're there, you can learn how you can support the creation of future episodes. Read on, and we'll be waiting for you in the next transmission. We would be honored if you would join us.